And so I have it on a little board with a, um, uh, I'm using a, um, an LPC 1758, which is an ARM uh, uh, microprocessor from uh, NXP. And uh, I chose that primarily because, uh, uh, because it has a uh, built-in uh, integrated USB. So I was able to make a little USB dongle with just two chips. Uh, one is the microcontroller that controls both USB and the wireless transceiver chip, and the other is a wireless transceiver chip that does all the RF stuff. And that's basically it. It's, uh, it's about four times the size of a typical uh, Bluetooth dongle, um, but I think it's about ten times the Uber. And uh, uh, I'm going to see if I can make a little live demo work for you here. Um, and this is, uh, this is an entirely open source project. Uh, this, is the, this is the layout in Eagle. And uh, I made uh, six PCBs just for TourCon. I thought this would be like special release uh, kind of preview thing. Uh, three of them work. <laughs> and uh, I promised one of them to Dominic, so he's going home with one. Uh, I'm going to keep one of the ones that works. And I'm donating the third to the auction, so you can get it tonight if you bid on it. Um, so it's a completely open source design, or it will be. Uh, I've, I just the other day fired up uh, Ubertooth at SourceForge, so look for it there. I will be posting the schematics and layout um, very soon, probably within the next 48 hours. Um, I will be posting host code that is minimal and needs a lot of work. Uh, also pretty soon. I will not be posting the firmware very soon uh, because the stuff I have right now is not, can't really be distributed um, and it's a complete disaster. So it needs to be rewritten before I really publish that. Uh, but if you're interested in building one of these, uh, you can, um, you know, start with the hardware, uh, get some PCBs made, and then uh, hopefully I'll have some firmware to share with you by the time uh, uh, you get it. Assemble. Uh, so I'm going to uh, just fire up here. Okay, I'm, I'm using a uh, Bluetooth keyboard just to make sure that there's some just to make sure that there's some Bluetooth traffic in the vicinity. Um, and then I'm gonna just make sure that like my Ubertooth is connected. Oh yeah, there it is, Ubertooth zero. And I will. Um, all I'm doing is dumping, uh, I'm just having the uh, arm uh, stream the, those bits that's coming in on that serial interface right into the USB. Uh, so I just have a host program that's just dumping all those bits out and stuffing them into a tool uh, that is uh, uh, using the, uh, the GR Bluetooth, the GNU radio code that uh, Dominic and I have worked on. Uh, let's see, oh, there we go. And you can see a got packet such and such, got packet. Um, and you can see most of those LAPs, the lower address part, are 4831DD, which is, in fact, the LAP of, uh, of the Bluetooth dongle that this, um, that this keyboard is talking to. Uh, and you can see there are some other Bluetooth devices in the room. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and what we're doing here is we're doing that solution in the lower right-hand corner of my, of my graph where we're just sitting on one channel and taking a survey of all the packets that go by. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, hey, thanks, whoever's doing that. That's some good stuff. So uh, that's about it. I've got just a couple minutes left, I think, if anybody has a question. Oh, how much did it end up costing me? Did I meet my $100 goal? Uh, the bill of materials for a single unit cost about $30. Um, I used uh, a PCB fabrication service that I highly recommend. Um, if, you, if you Google uh, Dorkbot PDX PCB, uh, PDX is the Portland airport code, the Dorkbot uh, Portland uh, group has a uh, has a PCB manufacturing service organized by a guy named Lane, and he uh, 
he will take eagle files from a whole bunch of people who need small numbers of boards built and and panelize them all together and get them done at a really low cost so i spent on these boards these boards are about three square inches and i believe i spent fifteen dollars to get three of them made the pcbs so that's a really good deal you can get three of those boards made through him or through some other prototype PCB service. Um, you can get the parts for about 30 bucks. Um, of course, you probably are end up, if you're, if you're as skilled at surface mount soldering as I am, you're going to end up uh, needing a few spare parts. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I recommend, uh, you know, there, there was no way to avoid really the chip, the wireless chip on the left is a no lead package. Uh, it's a QFN. There was really no way to avoid that and make it, I wanted to make it, you know, more hobbyist friendly, as friendly as I could, you know, but there's no way to avoid that because I couldn't find another chip that had the same capabilities. So what I've done is I've used a, a syringe with a, um, a solder paste and very carefully dabbed a little bit of solder paste on every little spot and then laid out all my parts and then just cooked the thing up in a, uh, an electric skillet. Um, so yeah. Yes. Yep. Thank you, Waz. That is uh, um, a definitely a good technique. Uh, and then you can hand solder on the, the SMA connector and the uh, USB connector uh, after that. Uh, and it, it works pretty well. Uh, the, the biggest hazard for me, personally, is um, getting too much solder paste. Um, it takes a little practice to get the hang of just how little you need in any one spot. Um, but um, if you were going to make, you know, more than half a dozen of them, you'd probably be better served getting a stencil uh, and uh, doing it that way. So uh, one minute, one more question. Anybody? Shoot. It's not related to the hardware, but once you get the data off the thing, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the question is, like, can we run it through Wireshark or something? And the answer is yes, uh, in theory. Um, I wrote a Wireshark plugin for Bluetooth baseband, um, which I need to kind of revive and maybe submit to the Wireshark people. So as somebody other than, you know, it's in our GR Bluetooth repository, though. It is published. Um, but the, there are some problems with Bluetooth decoding um, it's a harder problem. You can't just like get one packet and without any other knowledge about the target and, and fully decode it. It requires that you learn some things. You have to figure out what the address is. You have to figure out the, the clock of the, uh, of the target before you're able to properly decode it. And so uh, right now, you know, the demo I'm showing you guys is just showing you information that is easily decoded. It's not decoding the entire frame such that I could dump it into Wireshark. Um, but we have techniques uh, that Dominic and I developed um, for the GR Bluetooth project uh, that we'll be able to adapt to this hardware. And we will be able to fully decode uh, and dump uh, uh, into Wireshark. And, and down the road, I mean, I'm already working on, on Ubertooth 1. Uh, essentially, Ubertooth Zero is a class three Bluetooth device, which is like the shorter range capability, although the ability to have an external antenna helps a lot. Um, and uh, Ubertooth One will be a class one Bluetooth device, essentially. Um, and otherwise, it'll be mostly the same kind of architecture. And uh, I believe that this platform should be capable of single channel monitoring, like I'm doing now, plus uh, hop, frequency hopping following along a target and getting all the packets that are, that are being transmitted by a single target. And in the long run, I believe this hardware with quite a bit more firmware work will be capable of doing raw frame injection, which is something I don't think anyone's ever done with Bluetooth. Uh, so for, you know, 50 bucks-ish, uh, you can have a board that can do all that. So uh, my time's up. Thank you guys all for coming.